Hello, uh, welcome to this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be attempting to explain how I groove, which is hard to do, but uh, to explain how I groove, and also to how I uh, come up with patterns in the studio, and how I phrase the patterns. One thing that uh, comes to my mind, first off, when it comes to these questions, how do you groove, or how do you play patterns, is um, I look at my technique. I've got a one finger technique, which is your basic uh, using one finger, and then I take the one finger and also kick back like you would have picked, except I do it like this. It gives me a lot of uh, speed. So when it comes to creating patterns uh, and feeling patterns, I can normally play patterns that aren't uh, synonymous to bass playing. Patterns like um, uh, I feel the dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a so I get that by doing this. Some bass players use two fingers. I don't have that facility. Uh, I have it better now than I did years ago. Um, when it comes to creating patterns, I get ideas for patterns from the rhythm first. Uh, so usually I hear uh, a drummer or a guitar player and they'll play certain rhythms uh, and I'll get those ideas. Uh, from what I hear in the rhythm section. Uh, in grooving, uh, the groove is just uh, being very sure that what I play is very, very stable. So I've got this going. Also, by making sure that the instrument I'm playing very simple notes, but playing a lot of rhythm and slurs. So my habits are very confined. I don't go outside of my habits. I do what I do. And that helps me to groove, to get along with the drummer and the guitar player. It also helps me to create patterns by having these different techniques, from slapping or from playing back and forth. One, two, uh, one, two, eight. <laughs> rhythm and blues. Um, let's use the same chord <clears throat> for sake of demonstration. I had mentioned earlier that the pop feel or sound is usually a major chord. In rhythm and blues, it's always a dominant sound. This is the chord that a guitar player or the piano player will play. It's a dominant sound. Now the difference in, uh, for me, in a pop shuffle and an R&B, they're both the same thing, uh, except that um, uh, environmentally, musically, uh, R&B bass lines usually are a pattern. Now, there are, there are only probably nine basic, fundamental, ethnic rhythm and blues patterns, and they're all patterns. Sometimes you'll find an R&B pattern that will go 
then that's over the dominant sound of the chord. But basically, when you say rhythm and blues, the bass now plays a pattern, a phrase. Uh, I can think of two or three. One, uh, we got the same tempo, but now we're in R and B. Rhythm and Blues also has a set structure of either a 12 bar phrase or an 8 bar phrase, normally. Of course, that can change when people write different concepts or different uh, chord, chord pro progressions, but when you say Rhythm and Blues, you're sort of looking now for a 12 bar phrase of some sort with, uh, of, of, of chord changes. Um, all the rhythm, it's the same thing with rhythm and blues. Now the bass, instead of the bass playing simple, doom, da, ba, doom, doom, da, doom, da, he's playing a phrase. Da, doom, da, da. Or, or variation. And, Again, uh, rhythm and blues can be very simple if you know the ethnic uh, environmental uh, bass patterns. Of course, you could uh, vary them as much as possible, but for rhythm and blues, the bass is, is usually playing a phrase or uh, also a, 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 a popular traditional, I should probably use the word tradition more than I should say ethnic, but it is Rhythm and blues is uh, sort of associated with black music. Uh, the tradition is to get the feel of triplets is the way that it's written, but it really feels like a eighth note, a dotted eighth note connected to a sixteenth note, that kind of thing. Um, one tradition also in the same key is just to play a straight or and of course you can add in all the other tradition and two chord wise have certain guitar patterns that are also tradition for it. So along with the tradition of guitar patterns and keyboard patterns, it helps the tradition of the bass line also. There are many varied things, but uh, one thing that uh, is very, very uh, simple to remember that in rhythm and blues, the bass player does play a pattern, not so much one or two notes, unless it's one of those songs that will go, ba -de -da, ba -da -de -da. ba -da -da. Another tradition is to walk the bass. Same key. Uh, I like to think of it like this, to play. Uh -uh. Or. While the singer is singing the melody or the horn player, if it's an instrumental, if they're playing, uh, if it is an instrumental. But as soon as uh, uh, the solo comes, which we call a ride, as soon as they take a ride or take a solo, then my habit is to now walk. So you got, uh, let's take the last half of a, of a uh, or the last quarter of a, a phrase, of a, uh, of a rhythm and blues a phrase, dun, five chord, dun, and now the solo. This also, too, depends upon who you're working with. If it's rhythm and blues, you're going to have a drummer that understands the same tradition and a piano player that has the same tradition. Uh, whenever I'm playing anything, I play with, I marry the drummer, just for a hot minute, or for the minute of that song. Me and the drummer become married, and I follow him. Uh, if he's playing ding, 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 I try and get a ding, 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 ding. Or if I'm going ding, 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 ding. The guitar player is, is playing. The 
guitar player has that. So when I have this push pull, it's like riding a bike. When I go down, he comes up. When I go down, he comes up. So it's a perfect marriage of that. Rather than triplets, triplets is rock and roll. Da 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 da. In rhythm and blues, we leave out the middle triplet. So it sounds like instead of da 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 is do da 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 da. Some people call it drag time. Like if you're walking, you put your heel down. And when you walk, the, the heel drags as you put it down. All over a dominant sound. Not a major sound, but dominant. Now we're going to play a pop shuffle. The pop shuffle sort of is a, uh, a general description of basically how um, myself and, uh, and, and the drummer, this particular drummer, how we play pop shuffles. We're usually hired together, we played a lot of uh, music together, and it's uh, a pop shuffle for pop music or standard songs that are in a shuffle beat. A one, two, three. <laughs> Pop shuffle, uh, all these terms, um, terms, you, you have to use terms in order to clarify what's being said. The shuffle normally is, um, is something that's, when you think of a shuffle, or when I think of a shuffle, I think of rhythm and blues. Because most rhythm, all, the majority of rhythm and blues songs or concepts, it is a shuffle. And all the rhythm and blues um, shuffles usually have a dominant seventh chord in it. So I'm looking at a, uh, for sake of demonstration, a uh, a B7 chord, which is a funk or an R&B sound. But now pop, the chord structure of most pop tunes are using major chords. That's the sound of a pop chord, as opposed to a a blues, a blues chord. So in pop shuffles, uh, the music is usually not funky. It's just the, the rhythm that's implied uh, to, uh, uh, to show that it is a shuffle. And a lot of popular songs do have uh, a shuffle groove or concept to them. What I try and do in playing pop shuffles, uh, to me it's very interesting and once I analyze my playing, that I basically play the same thing all the time. I'm a very basic tonality player. Yeah, what I mean is I don't play a whole lot of notes, theory notes. I use a lot of rhythm. I play a lot of rhythm where I think rhythm first. So with the bass, let's go back to the same B chord. Now, thinking of popular music, let's use a major seven chord, B major seven. So in this chord, the bass is responsible for the tonic. So the tonic or tonic perfect positions are one, 
five and one again, which I call eight. And looking at the intervals of the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when I play pop music, I basically will utilize the eight and the five uh, interval of the chord. So here I have a Now, rhythm of the shuffle is usually like, uh, let's just pick a groove. What makes it a shuffle is usually it comes from the drums. The drums usually are playing like a, uh, a triplet feel. But straight triplets, and I've got this going. Taking the same chord, I'm going to move down here because the register now is in the bass, more, more, more bottom heavy for me. In my playing, I will imply the shuffle by taking from the drummer the uh, in the pop shuffle demonstration that's played with the uh, with the rhythm section you'll hear that I'm trying to really emulate the drums. Uh, Rhythm-wise, whenever I play any kind of music, whether it's a shuffle or not, I'm really playing rhythm or drums on the bass. So there are, very ways, uh, there are varied ways that I, that I accomplish that. One is I just mentioned. Or da, 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 as a now depending upon where your heart is or where where, where your feeling is there are a lot of ways to carry that further on Ta, ta, ta. Again, I'm playing drums, really. It's just that the drums don't have, uh, they can't play notes, but they play the rhythm. So I've got. <laughs> Depending upon how I feel or, or how you may feel when you attempt to play like a, this is more of a pop kind of feel. Now I mentioned earlier about the one finger back and forth where now I can play, really, all drums thinking in my head. And I'm using still one, five, one. All one, five, one, five, different variations of the one, five. If this is a major chord, and if I want to fill, I've got. If it's a minor chord, I got. Usually when I involve the other notes is when someone's taking a solo or the drummer begins to play on his ride cymbal. So the pop shuffle is more that kind of feel for me in playing very simple notes, but a lot of rhythm, or as much rhythm as the rhythm section can stand. But I, I played professionally first as a guitar player, and that was rhythm and blues. And then I went from uh, guitar to bass, and my, um, my first professional playing uh, as a bass player was in jazz. Uh, we're going to play uh, a tune called Born Again and Again and Again, which is the title off of one of my previous albums. It basically is a Latin jazz fusion concept of music where I use um, uh, mostly all my techniques.
This song is an original uh, that I called Born Again, Again, and Again, and Again, in that the title sort of represents how I feel about the song. Uh, it's a mixture, a fusion of, uh, of funk, a mixture of uh, Latin, and also a little taste of jazz. It's a fused mixture. Uh, during this particular song, like I play with uh, the one finger technique and the two finger technique. I also use the slapping technique too. And I also use the octave slapping technique. Where I kick off of this string. I also use a chording effect. But all these things also melody. And so on. Now in this particular song it has, I feel from the drums, a samba. Um, whether he's playing an actual categoric samba, he's not, but he's influencing a samba beat in what he's playing. Also, I am doing it also. I'm padding forward, forward. So I feel the Latin part there. Uh, in the bridge of the song, we played funk. Which is funk for me. Also in this song, I took a solo where I use the back and fourth technique on my finger. And also use a strumming technique. So I use everything that I know, basically. Uh, it gives me good feeling uh, to use everything. Uh, if I could bite it, I probably would do that on a song like this. But in coming from the, the, the drums, I play off of this foot. I, don't, I play with it, but I don't play, I don't hit when he hits. If he's playing straight four, I'm playing, boom, 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 I'm playing the upbeats. If I'm playing straight four, he's playing the upbeats. Uh, there's a lot of controversy about whether the bass should play with the bass drum, but of course that's not so. In fusion music, the bass player and the drummer should do their own things but walk together, if that makes sense, to not so much left foot, right foot, but just to walk together. Uh, I get a great feeling out of his uh, hi-hat. He's playing, and I'm playing uh, along with him. So when I hear from uh, this particular drummer in particular, uh, we've worked a lot together, so I know we know how we work together. If I were a drummer, I would probably play a lot like him um, or be the kind of drummer that he is. And probably if he played bass, he would probably be would. the kind of bass player that I am. I and there's a lot of rhythm there. A lot of rhythm. So uh, it's probably unique that we uh, have made a career somewhat together. But uh, when, uh, in playing with me or any other bass player, uh, I would imagine you, li you listen for different things in each bass player. Yes, so sir. with me in particular, you know, what do you listen for in me? Well, I listen for the root. Mm -hmm. I always try to find the root, especially in you, because your downbeats are going to be a dominant factor of ah. whatever you play. Your chords and things all come after. So if I can mesh with the root, then I know that I'm tuned in to you mm. because I'm going to play off you, with you. Mm. I, I, I think too, uh, uh, with, with any drummer, uh, you have drummers that play basic like boom, boom, ba, doom, doom, ba, boom. But uh, your more successful drummers have nuances in their playing. And he has many nuances in what he's playing. If he's playing something very basic, although what he just said was he's, when I'm busy, he's basic, but see, I hear your nuances. Yes. You well, know, I hear all the inner, all the inside of, of the music. And when there's a, another musician there, uh, I look at the other musician the same way as I do here. It, it, I have no problem coming up with a bass line because first I'm a, I think a rhythm first. 
So if the guitar player, once a guitar player is playing, he, the good musicians will listen to what uh, each other is playing. Now I have basic dominant habits and so does this uh, drummer. Uh, every drummer should have dominant habits and it's very rhythmic. So when you get a keyboard player who plays melodically but also fits in the inside of the rhythm, it helps. The, the basic thing is that there's no one, it's almost like playing 6, 8, and 12, 8, and 12, 4 all at the, all same, at the time. same time. Except that one of those rhythms ha has a dominant. Now all this is basically led by whoever the leader is, in which case we're primarily side men. We are support people. And so a conductor, or if the guitar player is the artist, or the piano player is the artist, or if it's a saxophone player, the main thing is for a bass player to have his skills together, his theory and harmony together, so that uh, I make myself very easy. If it's a minor chord, I just concern myself with, that's where the bulk of my rhythm goes. Sounds very, very busy. It sounds very, very busy, but it's not really, uh, tonality is not busy um, as far as the notes in the uh, degree of the scale. This next demonstration is a blues ballad. Uh, it's called, we call it Ice Cream Changes, Round the Horn, one, six, two, five, with no bridge. Just a plain old, everyday, old-fashioned, traditional uh, blues ballad. Uh, blues ballad, there really isn't much difference between a blues ballad and so-called rhythm and blues. What happens is the rhythm and blues, the shuffle feel, now comes way down to a slow dance groove, you know, where you slow dance. I used to do that a lot when I was young. I still do it. But uh, when, when it gets slower, the blues, blues ballad is just a shuffle that's down to where you slow dance. On the demonstration with the rhythm section, we're playing what we call ice cream changes. It's slang. But what it is, it's a one, six, two, five uh, formation of chord structures. The one, to the six, two, to the five. Six, two minor, to the five. Now that traditionally is what's called a blues ballad. Um, there are hundreds of songs that go that way. Uh, there are some blues ballads also, too, that have, uh, uh, back to what I said at first, the where this line, I'm in B-flat now. Let's go back to the key of B, where I was playing. Now, that's the R-B shuffle. To make it a blues ballad, a blues ballad would be... One, 
So this right here keeps me steady. Also too, I had made a demonstration of shuffles where you have the uh, blues shuffle. For a blues ballad, it just is the tempo's just slow. Still all over a dominant seven chord. That's what really is, uh, that makes the difference, although, although two are very, very different. Uh, blues ballads also can be, um, um, well, they can't. They can all, they, it's always a 12 8 feel. And the only difference between a 12 8 and a 12 4, you kind of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But of course, that's difficult. So you count the 1, or you feel 2, 3, 4. Uh, 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 uh. And the same bass lines that you play on the R&B shuffles are the same bass lines that are played on the R&B ballad. Also, too, the R&B ballad will also, walking is involved. The reason I'm using, using the key of B is because basically for rhythm and blues, uh, bass, uh, rhythm and blues has been played uh, in thinking of basses and guitars. B is an open key. Um, you know, King Curtis played a lot in the key of B because it's a rich sounding key. On the demonstration, on the tape, it's in B flat because B flat is synonymous to B flat instruments like saxophones and trumpets. Um, in playing, um, in walking, the same thing while the melody is being played or being sung, you have a pattern uh, 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 back in B flat uh, 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 with the triplet feel. with a heavy backbeat. And as soon as the uh, solo starts, the ride will take the last half of the uh, R&B phrase, five chord. Now we're getting excited for the solo. And the drummer now is playing on his hi hat, and the energy is way up, and the bass is um, boom, boom, boom. Now, how to walk these phrases? There are traditional ways to walk the bass. It's also a personal. I usually involve jazz uh, uh, lines, and also involve um, the R and B. I mix them both up. It's my nature to do that. But to play one pattern while the solo is going on, uh, not the solo, play one pattern while the melody is being played or sung. And then when the, uh, when the solo is being played, the drummer comes away from the hi-hat and plays and rides, starts riding, and then the bass just starts walking, uh, bang, ying, 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 bang, or whatever the heart desires. This next demonstration is a pop ballad. The pop ballad that has a, um, uh, the pop feel in chord structure, and the way I basically perform your general standard pop, uh, pop ballad with the bass by using very simple uh, notes.
pop ballads are um, almost similar to uh, pop shuffles. You do the same thing to a pop ballad basically as you do to a pop shuffle. Whatever pattern you have, you just bring it down to a slow tempo where for slow dancers or people who dance together slowly. Um, the one big difference though between pop music and rhythm and blues music, as I mentioned before, was that rhythm and blues music basically carries a dominant seventh sound. The, the seventh is flatted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you flat it. In pop music, you keep the major seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, also in pop music, rhythm and blues music more or less has the same thing over and over and over, basically, traditionally. Whereas pop music is a, uh, or a pop ballad, pop music in general has more complicated chord structures. R&B is basically a dominant seventh. Now pop music will carry, that's a major seven chord, or a, that's a major nine, um, augmented chords. Um, uh, those sounds, uh, the diminished sounds, uh, Pop music is usually, uh, uh, the, the, the tradition of it is a popular song. The chords also, in the, during the uh, length of a verse, you're going to have a tendency to have a lot more complicated chords rather than just one or two as they do in rhythm and blues, traditionally. Uh, on the demonstration, uh, a song like Misty, there are many, 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 many songs written uh, to the chord progressions of Misty. They're all major seven, major nine, augmented elevenths, uh, all of these uh, uh, chords that are, that are extended beyond just the dominant sound. Uh, so in the demonstration with the band, we played a misty kind of a song, which I've, I've written two or three songs uh, to these chord changes. Um, uh, they're, they're very common, uh, especially for demonstration. What I have a tendency to do, which, is, which has been a good tendency, although uh, I have to be very careful in playing chords on the bass. The bass is responsible for one note at a time in music. But there are, and the guitar plays, plays chords or the piano player. So I've always had to be very careful when I play chords because I don't want to play a chord because the bass, the register that the instrument's in, it will fall over into the piano player or the guitar player. It'll fall over into their responsibility. So what I've done uh, in a lot of my um, uh, uh, recordings is to play things like, um, I don't know if this is if it's a, considered a ballad, but a ballad's anything that you can slow dance to. Uh, I'll play chords like, uh, which is a seventh chord. A don't, is do 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 don't, uh uh. Or I'll play chords like, here I have a, that's a really a tenth, or maybe it's probably a twentieth, because I've got the low E, the, the ledger line below the bass clef, and I've got this G sharp in the key of E. I've got this G sharp that's 10 steps away, or 20 steps away. So it has a tendency to sound, or, I basically only play chords on open strings. I'll play or minor nine or which is like a, um, uh, that's an A minor. Or I'll play if I played those things down here that be too muddy, like in the key of G, I will do that. can be called cute, but I have to be very careful when I do play chords. And when I do play them for them to be in a meaningful place in the music where I don't get in the way of the piano player 
or the guitar player because they're playing chords. So I will do this. Mainly I will play chords in this area in funk music because the notes are very, very short. Real short, but in ballads, I pick a place and maybe play, uh, if it's an A chord, if it's A minor, I might go, which has a nice effect, or if it's an A chord or a, or a E, or E minor or E9, I'll do that. So chording depends upon what the structure is. And when to play it is the most, when not to play it is more important than when to play it. King Curtis was a part of my education. Uh, I learned how to play all kinds of music through him. I learned how um, to carry myself as a person musically through him. And really wanting to play, I think Jimmy Smith, the organ player, um, I liked his music a lot, and I liked the ding, 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 and I heard it so clear, and I wanted to play more jazz or to be to really become a bass player. The, my, my next hero was Keeter Betts. He was an upright player, and he was working with Ella Fitzgerald. And uh, I learned standards, standard songs and pop songs by listening to Oscar Peterson with Keeter Betts. Uh, and then the next bass player was, um, uh, I think, Ray Brown, although I'm not sure either Ray Brown or uh, George Zivivier when I, I lived in New York then. And George Zivivier, Richard Davis were the bass players that I became friendly with. They were very, very kind to me. And I began to socially hang out and musically hang out with them. Uh, James Jameson, uh, who was the Motown bass player, was very instrumental in me finding my touch on the bass because as a professional player I had to do a lot of top 40 which in the 60s was Motown. Uh, in New York uh, I, uh, Jerry Jamat was a good friend of mine and I liked the way that he played and I would add a little bit of what I thought he played although it came out me or people don't know that and I keep saying too that uh, I play a lot out of that James Jameson school and there's a little Jerry Jamat there. Uh, uh, hopefully it shows in my playing because I like these two bass players. Recently, I think for sound, Anthony Jackson probably has impressed me more than any other bass player um, for the sound that he gets. Uh, but Anthony Jackson probably has stimulated, he probably has stimulated my, my search for a more modern sound because the Fender has an old fashioned sound. This next demonstration is a pop funk, more or less what uh, is termed as an eight-beat music. The chord changes can be anything. We've, ch uh, we've just picked a, a certain group of changes to help identify and to demonstrate uh, this particular feel.
pop funk. Um, these categories, again, are just, their names are given to categories so they can be explained. Uh, it's all a fusion of many categories, but in particular, pop funk, eight beat music. Um, the eight beat music is really the inside, uh, it's really still four, four, one, two, three, four, you got boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba. And uh, the funk of it is, is for instance, uh, let's go to um, in the key of E. And whenever you say R&B or funk, you're going to assume that the chord has got a dominant seventh in it. So we'll put, that's the sound of the chord. So we got one, two, eight beat music. One, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the funk. If you're slapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With a strong backbeat on two and four. Now, being that we're with pop funk, also too, keeping with funk first. Uh, do, 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 do anything that's funky. Same way with the finger. Now, we have funk there. Now, pop. Basically now the drums is carrying that boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. And the pop side of it is to be a little lazy, and as I mentioned before, it's to play one, five, one, five. So we got the same beat. Ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, drum, ba, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, and the bass. Now, there are a lot of tunes that go like, uh, one comes to mind is uh, Steely Dan's Josie. Uh, it's a pop funk, I feel it's a pop funk uh, uh, concept. Or uh, you can put a lot of categories on it, but the reason it's pop is because the changes to that particular song have major sevens in it, major nines, uh, other than a dominant chord. So the pop funk aspect of the eight beat music is to play simple here, tonality wise, and to let the drums carry and the guitar play the uh, the eight beat. As a steady mainstay diet for this particular concept in music. Now, of course, when you make your fills, there are a lot of things you can do. A lot of my habits are to play this. Uh, uh, the demonstration is an e, is, is an e minor. So, keeping e minor in mind, when I when I um, make a fill, I'm going to fill on a natural minor scale. I can go. which is going down to the seventh and the sixth. Or just walk right up for the first three notes in the natural minor scale. Or there are a lot of things you can do. You can play uh, Now here I've got the seventh and the minor tenth. Or I can play which is the tonic in the tenth. And I can take it even further, just in this key though, because I've got this low E. So there are a lot of pump, t uh, pump. There are a lot of pop tunes, like you can call them pump tunes, it does work. There are a lot of cliches that are put on these terms, uh, on, or, or on, on these concepts. But basically, if, we're, if I were in the key of G, We still have the drummer playing um tum pa tum boom pa tum boom pa tum tum pa tum tum tum. So if it's pop, 
and this chord is a major seventh, I can still sort of funk it up a bit. And when I do this, it's just to sort of stabilize what the chord is. But when it comes to pop, I play simple, one, five, and if I'm gonna play more than one, five, then I'll just play the scale that goes with the chord, maybe for two beats as a feel, like a drummer would. Ba, da, doom, doom, ba, da, doom, 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 So I'll do the same thing, doom, ba, doom, 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 ba, doom, 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 ba, doom, doom, you know, to play that way. But the pop aspect of the bass should be very simple. And when you feel, then to play off of the scale that goes with the chord that's being played. This demonstration is a pop funk 16 beat demonstration and it more illustrates um, uh, the 16 beat feel which is very energetic and it sort of describes uh, the way uh, my playing has been on the TV series Fish, uh, Marlena Shaw's record which is very uh, popular, who is this bitch anyway, and on Kid Charlemagne on a Royal Scam, although a lot of the Steely Dan stuff when I play with Bernard or Jeff Baccarol is 16 beat music. This is basically uh, a, a, a concept that I play. I've played all my career. Uh, we just played a cycle of fours. And it's basically, um, uh, I can name like a Kid Charlemagne kind of groove. Uh, in that that's the one that's most recognizable, or the song is most recognizable. But I play that way. Uh, in this kind of playing, it's very, very rhythmic. The tempo's real, real high. Uh, I get a great push from the 16th field, 16th beat music, from the 16th on the hi-hat, and then I employ or imply my back and forth technique, which is still coming from, uh, it's not old fashioned, but it's the old school. I call it basically uh, 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 coming out of a James Jameson thought in that he played a lot of one. I have tonic here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight degrees in the scale of this B minor chord. So I'm basically just playing across one, I mean eight, five, eight. 
So mm -hmm. I'm, it sounds like a lot of notes. It is a lot of notes, but it's just tonality wise. It's just one, five, one or octave one, which is eight. And then also implied here, I didn't really imply it, I actually played um, uh, music that I really get, uh, have, have um, uh, enjoyed playing, uh, tunes like Till You Come Back by Aretha Franklin, the original version, uh, where you use a lot of slurs and slides, which I do them off of the nine. It's not a nine chord, but I slide off of the tonic into the nine. <laughs> And from the five to the six. Also, too, I implied a lot of, oh, I didn't, I keep using that word, but I do imply it. It's not really. Uh, so I do use a lot of. Um, uh, walk-ups. A lot of people feel they must get pops or slaps or chops by actually slopping, <laughs> slopping, actually <laughs> popping. It ends up being slopping sometimes, uh, the way that it sounds. But sometimes you can just get that by just lifting this string up right here. Just lift it up. Rather than always remember that the further away you get from the instrument, the longer it's going to take you to come back. So I try and stay as close as I can. A lot of people do it for show, but show's not important, as, uh, especially in doing studio work or doing songs. You want to stay as close to the instrument as you can.